Have you ever wondered why a steaming cup of coffee cools down when left on the table? Or why does touching a metal spoon when cooking feel different from touching a wooden one? Why does an ice cube melt when it is left sitting on the table? And why do we say it is hot today even though the sun is not directly touching us? These everyday experiences point to two important science ideas that we often confuse, heat and temperature. Today, we will explore the difference between them, understand how they work, and learn how temperature is measured in real life. Ugh, amazing! This is Serbas of Serbas TV, and I will be your guide in exploring the world of science. Are you ready to learn? If you find this video helpful, please do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Do not forget to like, share, and comment. Hashtag Agamazing. Let's go! Before we dive into definitions, let us start with what you already know. When you warm your hands near a fire, you feel energy moving toward you. When you check your body temperature with a thermometer, you see a number. That feeling of warmth and that number are not the same thing. In science, we classify them differently. Heat is energy in transit. Temperature is a measure of how fast particles are moving. Let's break them down one at a time. Heat as energy in transit. When you touch a hot spoon, heat is transferred from the spoon to your hand. In physics, heat is defined as energy in transit. Energy that moves from one object to another due to a difference in temperature. Temperature itself does not move, only heat does. This same idea explains why ice melts. When ice is exposed to something warmer than itself, heat flows from the surroundings into the ice, and that transfer of energy causes it to melt more quickly. Heat transfer occurs only when two conditions are present. First, there must be a temperature difference. Heat always flows from a hotter object to a cooler one. For example, when you touch a hot spoon, heat is transferred from the spoon to your hand, making your hand feel warm. Second, there must be thermal contact or interaction. The objects must be able to exchange energy which can happen in several ways. Heat can flow through direct contact. It can also move through a fluid such as air or water. And finally, heat can even travel across empty space without touching anything. Heat doesn't just appear. It is generated when other forms of energy are converted into thermal energy. First, think about friction. When you rub your hands together on a cold day, the resistance between your palm produces heat. And that's why they start to feel warm. Next, consider chemical reactions. Burning fuel, whether it is a candle flame or a campfire, releases energy in the form of heat. Then, there's electrical energy. When electric current passes through a resistor or a heating element, like in stoves or kettles, it produces heat that we use for cooking or warming our homes. Finally, Heat can even come from radiation and nuclear reactions. The sun, for example, produces enormous amounts of heat through nuclear fusion, and that energy travels across empty space to warm the Earth. Heat is measured as energy transfer, usually in joules or calories using tools like a calorimeter. Temperature as kinetic energy. Now, let us move on to temperature. When you hear someone say it's 30 degrees today, what does that number really mean? Temperature is not about energy moving from one place to another. It is about the motion of particles inside the substance. Temperature is a numerical measure of how hot or cold something is. More scientifically, it represents the average kinetic energy of the particles in a substance. In other words, it tells us how fast the particles are moving on an average. As temperature increases, particles move faster and their kinetic energy goes up. 
as temperature decreases, particles slow down, and their average kinetic energy goes down. For example, ice has a low temperature because its molecules vibrate slowly. Boiling water has a high temperature because its molecules move rapidly. Now that we know what temperature means, let's talk about how we measure it. First, we need an instrument. The most common tool is a thermometer. A thermometer gives us a numerical value that tells us how cold or something is. Next, let's look at the different scales we use to express temperature. Degrees Celsius. It is used worldwide in daily life, weather reports, and science education. On this scale, water freezes at 0 degrees and boils at 100 degrees. It is common in weather reports and classrooms. Degree Fahrenheit. It is primarily used in the United States for weather, cooking, and household settings. Here, water freezes at 32 degrees and boils at 212 degrees. Kelvin. This is the standard scale used in laboratories and scientific research. In the Kelvin scale, water freezes at 273.15 Kelvin and boils at 373.15 Kelvin. This shows how Kelvin starts from absolute zero, making it the standard scale for scientific work. Let's quickly recap what we have learned today. Heat is energy in transit. It flows from a hotter object to a cooler one. It depends on mass, material, and energy transfer, and it is measured in joules or calories. Heat can be produced by friction, chemical reactions, electricity, or even nuclear processes. Temperature is a numerical measure of the average kinetic energy of particles. It tells us how fast molecules are moving and how much energy is being transferred. Measuring temperature is done with a thermometer. Understanding the difference between heat and temperature helps us explain everyday experiences, like why coffee cools down, why ice melts, or why doctors use thermometers instead of just touching your skin. It also connects directly to cooking, climate, energy use, and even how our bodies stay alive. So remember, heat flows, temperature tells. Heat is energy on the move, while temperature is the measure of particle motion. This is Servas of Servas TV saying, keep asking, keep exploring, and stay amazing. See you in the next lesson.